Keystone Heights, Florida. Where is it? What's there to do there? What's it like living there? And what's that tank got to do with anything in the thumbnail? Well, this video is about to answer all those questions. Keystone Heights is located between Jacksonville, Florida and Gainesville, Florida, pretty much at the intersection of State Road 100 and State Road 21, which is behind me. Hey, the Keystone Heights air city limits geographically is a small area, so this video I'm going to be talking about the Keystone Heights area. And that also bleeds over from Clay County to a little bit Bradford County in and into neighboring Melrose, Florida. I'm going to be covering a lot in this video. We're going to drive through the area. We're going to through the downtown area, some of the neighborhoods, so you get a real feel of what it's like. We're going to be covering the area of the downtown and just outside. We're going to be talking about the parks. We're going to be talking about the lakes. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. And so I just want to, before I get too deep into the video, I just want to remind you that if you have any questions at all about this area, even if it's not real estate related, give me a call personally or touch base with me with an email personally or write a comment below and I'll answer it. Right now I'm in the downtown area of Keystone Heights and it's where State Road 21, the two lane road, goes right through the middle of it. Now this area downtown is comprised mostly of small businesses where you've got everything from you got the gift shops to salons, you've got an electronics store, you can get cell phones there, you've got the banks, you've got a gym, uh, there's a lot of small businesses down here of all different types. Also, you've got a great downtown cafe. Now, as you get a little bit further out of this downtown area, you do get into some of the national chains like with, with the drug stores or the fast food restaurants. But there's some things that aren't in Keystone. And if you need to have this, then Keystone may not be for you. And that's this. If you need one of these stores for your grocery shopping, well, that's not in Keystone Heights. If you need one of these stores for your hardware needs, well, that's not in Keystone Heights. And if you need one of these stores for your general merchandise, that's not here also. But we do have a lot of other stores. But just because we don't have those stores doesn't mean we're without. We've got a local supermarket chain called Hitchcock's, and they got a great deli. And in Keystone Heights, we have probably one of the best Ace Hardware stores in the country. The staff here is tremendous. Great personal service, great selection of gifts, of course your hardware needs, and a great selection of knives. For our general stores, well we've got Dollar General, and we've got a couple of them, and that's just okay with me. And if that ain't enough, then we've also got one of these, so we've got plenty of places to shop. Since Keystone Heights is located in North Florida's lake region, that means there's an abundance of lakes in the area. And the, most of these lakes are recreational lakes. And what that means is that you can use the motorized boat or a personal watercraft like a Sea-Doo or a jet ski in the lakes. There are a few that have restrictions, and those are usually found in, where there's an HOA. Hey, you know a question I get a lot is from people that are out of state coming into this area are, are there alligators in the lakes, and what are the alligators like? Well, yes, this is Florida, so you're going to have alligators show up in the lakes. And usually my answer to the question, what are they like, I usually say they're friendly. You know, since I get so many questions about alligators, and it's not just from people from out of state, it can be from people coming from Jacksonville, Orlando, South Florida, or even Tampa. I want to talk about the alligators for just a little bit here. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is the agency that pretty much manages the gators in the state, also known as the FWC. Now, they do allow harvesting of around 7,000 gators a year. Now this helps keep the population a little bit in check because there's about 1.2 million estimated gators in the state to 22 million people. So there is the chance of an encounter. Now the encounters are rare. There might be five unprovoked bites a year, and that's the average with an alligator. Now something to keep in mind is just because you're not on a lake or waterfront doesn't mean you won't see a gator because they do travel. So they go through the woods or they'll 
you'll, you'll see them walking on a road or the side of the road to get wherever they want to go. But if you leave them alone, the chances are nothing's going to happen. Now, they do, the FWC does get about 16,000 complaints about nuisance skaters, and the nuisance skaters are generally over four feet in length. Anything under four feet in length is not considered dangerous to you, unless of course you try to pet it or pick it up. Now, something else, you should never feed the alligators, and you should try to stay away from swimming in the lakes or rivers or ponds after dark when the alligators are more active. Also, their mating season is between May and June, so they're a little more aggressive. And then the baby gators will hatch out probably around like August to September. So you've got to keep that in mind because if there's a nest nearby, then the, the mom gator is going to be very protective of it. Now to talk about their diet. Well, alligators generally eat fish, turtles, you know, small critters like that, snakes. Um, birds and small small animals of prey. And that's why it's not a really a great idea to have your dogs in the water around an area that may have alligators or to be walking them along a canal or something that is known to have alligators because the small dogs may look like something the alligator may want to eat. Even though people aren't on that diet, you could get in the way. So all you have to do is just be aware of your surroundings. Also, if you see one, you want to take a picture of it, you know, stay at least 50 feet away because those alligators, when they come out of the water, they can run faster than you for the first several feet. So you're not going to outrun them, and they do climb. So just use some common sense when you're, when you're around an area that may have gators, and you'll be okay. You know, we've got plenty of the fast food chains, you know, that are the, the national brands, such as like the Wendy's, McDonald's, uh, Hardee's, you got Subway, and you got Domino's. But we also have locally owned businesses, too, places to eat. Now, what I would do is check their websites to see their menu and their hours of operation. They start off with, I'm right downtown, and behind me we've got Clyde's Cafe, which is a great place for breakfast and lunch. And also downtown, just across the street, is Julia's Midtown Cafe. Hey, you can come here and get a lunch special with their pizzas, or if you really want to cool off with some ice cream, this is the place to do it. Hey, and also check out Frankie. He's the greeter, the parrot, right here at the front door. If it's Italian food you want, you gotta hit Brooklyn Boys. Their pizza, you know the type that just folds over your thumb, and the garlic rolls, man, they're out of this world. I can eat baskets of them. And they got plenty of beer on tap to go with all that. And if you're looking for seafood, you've got to try Cedar River here in Keystone Heights. Hey, I haven't tried everything on the menu, but everything I've tried I've liked, and especially I could probably eat a whole basket of those hush puppies. Now I'm going to take a drive around the area, so come with me. I'll give you a better view of what it's like. What I'm going to do now is I'm taking you from the south end of town. We're heading north, State Road 21. Right on the right there is the parking lot and all for Keystone Beach area. And right here on the right is Keystone Heights City Hall. As you can see, State Road 21 here is a two-lane road as we're heading into town. And there's just all sorts of businesses on, around here. Um, you've got a therapy center, you've got like a hair salon and nails, you have a barber shop. Right here on the right you see we have a pharmacy and that's a local, that's a local pharmacy. Um, have insurance agents, um, a little bit of everything. Also on the left here we've got a gym. Um, and um, on the right here, this brick building, um, that happens to be my home office actually. Uh, there's a bank and then all kinds of other little stores. There's a place, an electronic shop where you can get cell phones. There's a little cafe, nice uh, gift shop right here on the right. Um, that's part of the Ace Hardware. Um, and we're approaching now the intersection of State Road 121 where I was standing before when I was uh, telling you where, where Houston Heights is located. So we're gonna take a right here on State Road 100 and now we're heading east. And you'll see right up ahead here is the Ace Hardware store that I was talking about. And on the left is one of those Dollar General stores and also another bank. Now as we approach this light, um, this is going to be Commercial Circle. And oh well, right there on the right there, we've got our own funeral home in town also. 
Now this, this light here is commercial circle and what we're going to do is we're going to take a left here and I'm going to show you some of the businesses that are along this road. As we go in the commercial circle, there's um, also a healthcare place on the left, um, a well drilling company, and there's an automotive repair center here right on the corner. And as we make this corner on the left, there's also uh, another auto repair that does electrical, like for generators, alternators, things like that, electric windows, anything electrical. You also have some restaurants on this, on this road here, and there's like, a feed store right here, up here on the right. And just past this store here, uh, the next building, yeah, you're going to see this is Brooklyn Boys Pizza, uh, one of the places that I was standing in front of talking to you about. There you can see the sign for Brooklyn Boys. Just on the left here is the post office in town. And then on the right, there's a, a nice little bakery also here in town. As we approach this stop sign, uh, this is going to be State Road 21. So had we gone straight through that light, this is where you have gone through. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to head north on State Road 21 just to show you a little bit outside of town, not too far, of uh, some more businesses that we've got here. And as you can see, over on the right, there's like a little strip of some, some shops there. And both on the left and right, you've got different kinds of businesses. And you'll have um, insurance companies, you got real estate companies. Uh, you have a daycare center right there. Um, also, right up ahead here, here's a national chain auto parts store, CarQuest. And then um, you've got some more restaurants, and you can see you've got the national chains I was talking about. You've got the Domino's Pizzas, and you got Hardee's right there. And just past this is there's another automotive repair center. And what I'm going to do is, because there's not much businesses past this point, I'm going to turn around and start heading back into town. As you can see, there's not much traffic here on State Road 100 even. As you see here, we've got the Family Dollar there where I was standing in front of before as we're getting to, towards the intersection of State Road 21 and 100. Now we'll make a right here and we're going to head west on 100 going out here. And there's another national chain. We've got a Dunkin' Donuts on the corner there and that's fairly new. And as we make this corner here on the left is going to be our um, electric co-op. It's Clay Electric Co-op. And they're a pretty good operation for the power company. And the, and the rates as far as uh, statewide, I don't know if they're the lowest, but they're in the bottom part of, of, of the rates. So we've got a pretty good um, power company here. Now, as off to the right there, just across from them, was also another national chain, which was Wendy's. Now, this is their district office for electric co-op. As we get up over this hill, there's going to be a little um, strip shop here. And we've got, as you can see, there's a McDonald's sign there, so another national chain. There's also a subway in the strip shop. You've got uh, another national auto parts chain. And this is where the Hitchcock's grocery store is in this shopping center. It's the Hitchcock Shopping Center. Now, just past this, you're going to see on the left another auto parts chain. So we got plenty of auto parts places in town. And as we go a little bit further out, um, also on the left here, is you're going to have, you've got another veterinary clinic right there. And then past that, you're going to have the city cemetery. And as we get going, you'll notice here it's just a nice two-lane road, not a lot of traffic. Um, although those in town, if there's 10 people in front of them at a light, they feel they're in a traffic jam. Now you see the sign here, we're getting into Bradford County. And remember I was saying that this Keystone Heights area encompasses clay and parts of Bradford County. On the left here, we've got some more businesses, a uh, uh, coffee shop. Also, we've got this nice pawn shop where you've got uh, guns, gold, coins, all that. And they're a pretty neat operation. Right on the left there is a place called Touch of Grace Galleria, which is kind of neat. It's, it's this enclosed area it's a real galleria where you got all these different businesses set up in there and so you see all the different personalities of the businesses and the different kinds of gifts and items they have for sale so it's a pretty neat place to check out if you're in the town right here on the left we've got another restaurant and also this entrance to uh, an rv resort that's fairly new now it's 
pretty much filled up now. I think it's like around 180 spaces or so. And you see the construction here on the left? Well, that's phase two of that RV resort because it seems to be a pretty popular thing. Some people were even there full time. You notice that sign right there just had an airplane on it. And that only means one thing, that means there's an airport. And sure enough, Keystone Heights does have its own airport. And we're gonna turn right here. Now they also have on airport property a company called The Firm, which is like a, a rally road racing thing where you can bring your own vehicle there and race on their track. And what I'm gonna do is a little bit further in here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop, pull out, and talk about the airport and The Firm a little bit. Keystone Heights has its own airport. Yeah, this airport was built in 1942, and it's got two 5,000-foot runways, so it can handle aircraft as big as C-130s. And if you're ever in the area where one of those land, it's pretty much a sight. They also have hangars for folks to store airplanes. They've got a business center and a wildlife area also on the premise. Here they've got a great new admin building, an FBO, and it's a great place for pilots that are taking a break in between flights or they need to plan the next flight. They've got a beautiful pilot's lounge. Also, if you're not a pilot, hey, you can come out here too because they've got this patio area out back with tables and chairs where you can just watch the aircraft. And if you happen to catch it on a day when the aerobatics are practicing or they've got an event, then you can check that out too. Well, here's that back patio area I was talking about. And as you can probably hear in the background, the aerobatics do have something going on today. In fact, I think they've got a contest going on. Here, check it out. MHD Rockland, an international company, deals with training and also maintenance, has a facility here at the Keystone Heights Airport. Here, check out one of their planes right behind me. All right, so you want to fly, but you don't want to do it in an airplane? No problem. Keystone Heights Airport has you covered because on the facility is this company, The Firm, which also has a driving school. Also, you can bring your own car to come race on their own track. It's, it's just a great opportunity. Hey, you can get out there. There's no traffic lights, no speed limits, no other people in your way. And you know what? You're not going to have to worry about getting arrested and going to jail for racing on the street. So for the cost of all that, or actually a lot less, bring your own car here and race, or take some of their classes and their instructions. You're going to have a ball flying on the ground. Right now I'm at Camp Landing, which is a military reservation, and the outside of that reservation is about two miles or so outside of Keystone Heights itself. But Camp Landing is a joint training center and it's on almost 73,000 acres. So it spans further than just the Keystone Heights area. But the folks at Keystone Heights can definitely hear when they're training. Hey, depending on what operations they're running or what you're going to hear or feel, hey, you can just hear gunfire in the background, or you may hear sounds that sounds like thunder, or the ground may shake, and the windows may even rattle in your house. My favorite is when the aircraft are doing maneuvers and they're flying above the treetops, especially if they come above my house. Hey, if all these sounds of freedom are a little bit too much for you, then maybe Keystone Heights isn't the right place for you. Let's talk about the parks that are around the Keystone Heights area. First off, we'll go with the one that's right behind City Hall. This park here has a children's playground, but also has a full court basketball court and two tennis courts. Now what if you come up to play some tennis or to shoot some hoops on the basketball court and you bring your electric vehicle and it's a little bit low in juice? No problem, because Keystone Heights has a charging station for electric vehicles and also just a few miles north of downtown Keystone Heights and then in the Keystone Heights area is this great state park, Goldhead Branch State Park, one of Florida's oldest state parks. At almost 2,400 acres, there's plenty to do here. Goldhead really does have a lot to offer. They've got camping, also they've got cabins that you can rent if you don't want to camp. You've got the lakes, you got swimming, 
You've got, you can take uh, bike rides all through the trails. They got these beautiful ravines to look at. Some of these lakes here, natural lakes that were formed by sinkholes. You can also go horseback riding. There's so much to do here. Now, of course, most people arrive here by car, but if you're really looking for a good workout, you could take this bike route, a nice paved bike route, all the way from Keystone Heights. And just a little bit north of the downtown Keystone Heights area, you've got Little Rain Lake Park, and that's where I am right now. This is a 34-acre Clay County Park, and, it's, and it sets up, it's all set up for all the youth activities for youth football, youth baseball, youth softball, and youth cheerleading. They've got covered pavilions. They've got concessions during the games. I'm standing right now. Behind me is the football field. They've got tennis courts, and they've got this great playground. Here, let me take you around and take a look. Right here's the tennis courts. As you can see, you've got two nice full-size courts. So whether you're a tennis pro just warming up for that tournament, or a beginner that needs some lessons, this place is great for you. And check out this playground. This is beautiful. They've got so much to do. It's in such great condition. The, the kids got the slides, things to climb. They can spin around on this for a while. They're, they got swings over on the other side. And there's benches around here for the parents to sit to watch the kids. Here, let me take you around it. You see it. Here's where they have the full court basketball court. And this is really a nice court. Also, they've even got some bleacher stands next to it. So when you've got here playing your games, you can bring a bunch of people to cheer you on. And here you've got your baseball, softball fields. You've got multiple fields. Hey, on game weekends, this is a fun place to be when there's activity on all of them. They've got covered dugouts. They've got bleachers for your for your friends, family, and people to come cheer you on, and they got to practice batting cages. Another nice feature of this park is they have these covered pavilions throughout the park with the, with the picnic tables. I mean, this is great. You want to get out of the sun for a bit, and you're going to have a little picnic, and you bring a lunch out here during the day, it's great. And then, of course, on game weekends, when there's a lot of activity and the concessions are open, you got a place to sit down and eat also. And here I'm at Paradise Park which has a brand new pickleball court. Pickleball, I don't know what it is, but I see people out here playing it all the time. And the park also has several picnic tables, so you can just hang out. But if you want a barbecue, well, it's no problem because they've also got a grill, so fire it up. And they got nice, clean bathroom facilities. That's a big plus. And right next to Sunrise Park is Paradise Park. That's right, I didn't misspeak, it's Paradise Park, because it's a dog park, and they've got all kinds of obstacles for your four-legged buddies. And they even got this nice picnic bench for you to sit down and relax while your dogs are having a ball. And the park has a water fountain, although during the COVID crisis, they shut off the water to the people. But there's no COVID restrictions for the dogs. Folks, when you bring your dogs to the dog bark, then just, just be responsible and pick up after them. They supply plastic bags for you and a dump station. But just in case you forget, there's plenty of signs to remind you. And inside the city limits, just across from the street from City Hall, you've got historic Keystone Beach Park. And this place here, the pavilion behind me, was built originally in 1924 and renovated in 2021. This park has so much between the playgrounds, the picnic tables, and then of course the beach area. This beautifully newly renovated pavilion is perfect for your events, whether personal or business, because you can rent it out. And the pavilion has this great deck out back to overlook the lake. Check it out. playground that's in this park is called Geneva Jungle. It's an all-wooden playground and a lot of volunteers and also people that donated money and businesses that donated helped make it possible and it's a huge playground for kids. 
Keystone Beach also has this nice covered pavilion with these picnic tables underneath. And if you want to cook out, well, they've got you set up for that too. Two nice barbecue stations. And if you're looking for picnic tables for either just that family gathering or a big event, this is the place. Directly across the street from, from the City Hall is Keystone Heights Natural Park. Now this park is on the site of what used to be the Keystone Inn that was built back in 1924. Now you've got nature trails, you've got picnic tables, you've got a seated gazebo, and of course plenty of trees. Located downtown is Azalea Park. Now Azalea Park has a walkway with several fitness stations. Now these fitness stations are located all along this walkway and have various type of exercises. Now I'm not going to demonstrate them because I'm not going to embarrass myself. And in the middle of Azalea Park you got this great gazebo area with plenty of bench seating. It's a great place to cool down after your workout. Right now I'm in Twin Lakes Park. Now Twin Lakes Park is a Clay County Park located just a little bit east of downtown Keystone Heights. And by the net behind me you can tell what this park is mainly used for. It's the home base for Keystone Heights Youth Soccer. Now they've got everything for all ages all the way from U6 up to U19 and it's a great program. And here's the field for the U6ers. Hey, you know what? My kids played on this field when they were growing up. In fact, I even think they kicked in a goal in this very net. This is a great program for the small kids to start out in. Also through the park, they got these covered pavilions with these picnic tables, which are great. You can just come here during the day without any games going on and then have a picnic. Or during game weekends, it's a great place to sit down and enjoy your meals and your refreshments from the concessions. Also behind me, you can notice there's a small little kiddie park, and that's for the kids that maybe don't play soccer, but their brothers and sisters are out there on the field. Twin Lakes Park isn't just about soccer only because, they see, they do also have tennis courts. Well, coming from Twin Lakes Park is the perfect lead-in to this next park. This is part of the Florida State Parks, and it's the Palaka Lake Butler Trail. Now, this trail was put on where the old railroad used to run along here, part of the Rails to Trail program. And Twin Lakes Park is a designated trailhead rest area for this trail. This trail is 47 miles of paved trail through beautiful scenery for great for walking, running, or riding your bike. And locating Keystone Heights is almost like a, like a historic landmark, is a YMCA Camp Immokalee. Since 1909, it's been helping campers have a good time. They got programs anywhere from summer camps, winter camps, spring break camps, Halloween camps, teen weekends, and family camps. You need to check them out. And if you happen to be in Keystone Heights on the 4th of July, then check out the parade. And another great thing about being in the Keystone Heights area is you've got the Gatorland Water Ski Show Team that practices here. And they put on shows in the area, and these shows are free like the one we're at today. Check it out. Doing the tail walk right now so you can see that behind your voice. Whoa, that's cool. The Gatorland Ballet Line. Keystone Heights area has two elementary schools that feed into a junior-senior high school. 
Here I'm at McRae Elementary, which is located out in a more rural area of Keystone Heights, probably about 8 to 10 miles out of the downtown area. Here I'm at Keystone Heights Elementary School. Now this school is located down in the city, and it is directly across the street from the junior and high school. And here is the Keystone Heights Junior Senior High School. It's a combination school and it's located down in the town also. And they've got so many different programs for kids, it's best to check on their website to see what they currently have available. Keystone Heights High School has its own football stadium, so if you're looking for some Friday night lights action, they've got you covered. And sometimes during the rivalry games, the crowd is so loud in the band, you can hear them downtown. Hey, if you need college action, well, just about 45 minutes away is Gainesville, Florida, home of the Florida Gators. And if an NFL is what you're looking for, then a little over an hour away, you've got Jacksonville, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, the Keystone Heights area doesn't really have a development, so to speak. So there's a lot of different types of homes out here. You've got everything from new construction, as you see behind me, to historic homes like the house behind me, built in 1921, which was a Sears kit home. And you got everything from suburban-type neighborhoods all the way out to the rural areas where you've got plenty of acreage for livestock. Also, anywhere from mobile homes to from a single wide all the way to an executive house. You can even own a house on a, on a golf course here in Keystone Heights. That's right, because Keystone Heights has its own golf and country club. Hey, and it's nothing new. It's been around since 1927. Hey, some of you have probably seen this video now and looked at parts of it and decided whether you'd want to stay here in Keystone Heights or live here or not. Well, what if you could kind of try the town out before you buy it, so to speak? Well, you can. Keystone Heights has this beautiful brand new RV resort. That's right. You can stay here for a few days or a few weeks and try the town out and see if you like it. Hey, you know what? Some people have liked it so much, they've even made this RV resort their permanent resort, their permanent place to stay right now. Hey, here's some information on if you want to look up this RV resort. As you can see, Keystone Heights has a lot to offer for a small town. Now in this short video, I couldn't possibly include every business and every event that's going on. So if you think Keystone Heights might be the place for you, reach out to me, either by email or phone. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Hey, until my next video, I'm out of here.